looks like we need to make another video on Task Fever as they got some cool new updates. For the people who do not know, Task Fever is a code first agent framework for creating and building large language model powered autonomous agents. It's another Microsoft framework that has been worked upon a lot over this past month. It's a cutting edge code first agent framework that is revolutionizing the way you plan and execute data analytical tasks. Just take a look at this example where you can use Task Fever to pull data from a database and apply an anomaly detection algorithm. You first select the model that you want to work with. In this case, they are using GPT-4. Then you simply feed it the context you want to work with. And in this case, the devs are uploading a sample data of their table, which is being ingested into the database asking for its schema. Now you can see that there are a couple of other agents such as the executable agents working towards completing this task. And on the screen, you will see that they are using the SQL pull data plugin, which was something that was brought through out the actual agents. They were able to call this plugin and it was able to help complete the task. You can later see that they create an anomaly detection algorithm graph based off the data that was infused into the database using Task Fever. Now, this is just something that you can do simply with Task Fever. There's many different things that you can do, whereas you can build these autonomous AI agents to complete various sorts of coding tasks. You can have it execute various other things. And this is something that we'll take a look at throughout today's video. We're also going to take a look at some of the couple of new updates that they have introduced. So stay tuned and let's get straight into the video. Now, I know this might be getting repetitive, but I really want to emphasize on our private discord as it has been thriving a lot recently. There has been a lot of great things coming out of this, as you can just see from this like image right here on the screen where we basically just had a new partnership where we are giving out paid subscription plans for data coup. And this is an amazing effortless and accurate approach for data extraction. Now, this is just an example of something that we do and work with. There's multiple different paid subscriptions that are given out to our Discord members for free. You simply become a member and you get access to various different AI tools across the month. And it's on different ranges of AI tools. It's not necessarily just data execution tools, but it's various different types of categories in the field of AI. Now, we don't just end up giving out free subscriptions to AI tools. We also give out various other different things like collaboration opportunities where people can basically work as a team to build applications. We have various networks. We have news outlets. We have resources as well as daily AI inputs. So definitely recommend you check out the Patreon link in the description below as I really wanted to emphasize what you guys are missing out on if you guys are not a part of this. If you would like to book a one-on-one -on -one with me where you can access my consulting services, where I can help you grow your business or basically give you a lot of different types of solutions with AI, definitely take a look at the calendar link in the description below. Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back to another YouTube video at the World of AI. In today's video, we're gonna take a look at Task Fever, which is a user-friendly code first agent framework. It's designed for efficient planning and execution of data analytical tasks. You can also use it to create autonomous AI agents, and it can interpret different types of user requests through simple code snippets or even coordinate various plugins to perform tasks step by step. Now, the results are communicated in a natural language query, which can easily understand what you're trying to tell it. Task Fever has been dynamically able to generate different types of code to handle specific user requests where it can incorporate domain knowledge for accuracy in complex domains or even allow users to persist and download results. You can do various different things and I truly believe that this is a great tool that will help you out in increasing your performance as well as helping you be more efficient and effective. Now, this is just a little graph which showcases how the architecture functions. You first off start off with the user query where there's questions being sent into the planner. This is where it is ingested into the database and it uses large language models to process it. It is then sent to the memory, which is the database. It is then working alongside with the code interpreter to find different types of results, different types of codes to help you execute your task. It uses the large language model. It also uses different types of agents, which can execute different plugins to help you like basically solve that task. It also has a self memory implemented into its system so it can go through 
prior knowledge bases to help figure out what is best for the generation. It can then also be sent to the planner which can work on subtasks and this is where multiple agents can execute your task. It is then sent back to the memory and then sent back to the LM to give it back to you. And this is where you're able to get the execution completed based off what you had prompted. Now there are a couple of new updates that I wanted to basically emphasize upon. We first have the new plugin which is the Vision Web Explorer and this can basically enable users to open the web browser and explore websites seamlessly using Task Fever. You also have another update where you are able to stream in both the UI as well as a command line. This is a new UI that they have upgraded so I'll be showcasing this as we go further into the video. We also have the ability to now support a number of different large language models like Light LLM. You have Olama, Gemini, as well as Quen, which is Alibaba's large language model. Now you can see that they are continuously rolling out with new upgrades and new updates. So this is definitely something that you should stay tuned as this is a really useful tool that many of us can definitely use. Now I know I covered this in my last video, but I want to emphasize on some of these new things that they have highlighted with Task Viewer. We know that it's a rich data structure, which is supporting different types of working sophisticated data structures like Python, data frame. You have other sorts of data handling uh, structures, which you can basically function with. You have customized algorithms, which is going to help users encapsulate their unique algorithms into plugins and you can seamlessly orchestrate them within Task Viewer. You're able to incorporate domain specific knowledge, which is designed to easily integrate any sort of specific knowledge base that you want, which is going to improve the reliability as well as the effectiveness. You have stateful execution, which is going to support different types of execution of generated code. You have code verification, which is going to check up on your code. It's super user friendly, easy to use. You're also able to debug, which is really useful. Uh, you also have different types of security measures and it's easily extendable. So these are some of the great things that are coming out of Task Fever and it's truly something that you should definitely check out to see if it would be useful for you. Now in my prior video, I did demonstrate how you can install this, but it's fairly easy to do so and I'll just go over it once again. It's something that will require Python 3.10 or above, so make sure you have that prerequisites fulfilled. You also need an OpenAI API key if you're going to be using the OpenAI models. So once you have done that, you just simply need to create a Conda environment, which is also another application you'll need. Once you have created that environment, you need to then activate it with Task Fever. Once that is done, you clone the repository, go into the repository by typing in cd task fever, install the requirements with this command. Once that is done, you configure the LM, which is fairly easy. You can set whatever large language model you want. In this case, if we're using OpenAI, we set the model that we're using. So if we're using GPT-4, you set it as GPT-4 in the config file. And then you paste the API key that you want. And then you can simply just start it into your own CLI, which is your command line. And that's by typing in this command into your command prompt, and you'll be able to start it up with Task Fever stating this. And it's fairly easy. You can also use the web UI, which is something that is new, and they have created a documentation as to how you can start this up. If you go over here, it showcases how you can start playing around with it with their playground UI. It's using Chainlet to run the application, and you can see it's fairly like nice to use. It's super user friendly. You can do various things that we saw in that demo video. And that's easy as that as to how you can deploy this. You can also import your library. So if you're interested, I truly recommend you check out the documentation because they emphasize on a lot of different things, how you can configure different large language models, how you can customize it, add different plugins and so much more. So if you're interested, definitely take a look at this so you get a better idea as to how you can use Task Fever. Let's take a look at this example where we're using Task Fever to forecast QQQ's price and this is in the next, I believe, seven days. And if we go keep on going, it is using the different types of executable agents within Task Fever. And you can see that it's using the code interpreter, different types of debugging agents, as well as the different types of planners to execute this. And we can see that it sources through Y Finance. And if we go a little bit forward into the video, you can see that it forecasts the seven day forecast for QQQ and we can see that you're even able to ask it to plot out a historic data and predict the values for the upcoming graph and it actually outputs it through this 
and we can see that it's something that you can do fairly easy with tasks here it's a great assistant you can say that can help you in various different tasks and it can help you execute code help you execute various different ranges of tasks that you might have and that is basically it for task fever guys if you want me to do another video on stuff that you can create with task fever definitely comment that in the description below i'll leave all the links as to what i used in today's video in the description below make sure you guys follow me on the patreon page if you want to access our private discord this is a great way for you to get exclusive features such as subscriptions for free you have a lot of different resources and a lot more being delivered to you make sure you follow me on twitter if you guys haven't already this is where you can stay up to date with the latest ai news and lastly make sure you guys subscribe turn the notification bell like this video and check out our previous videos so you can stay up to date with the latest ai news so with that thought guys thank you guys so much for watching have an amazing day spread positivity and i'll see you guys fairly shortly peace out fellas